Hi, this is Herb Spiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And for those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I've been looking for the ideal printer. The printer you take out of the box, you connect to a computer, and you print beautiful 3D prints without optimizing slicer settings, without calibrating the print bed, without assembling the printer. I haven't found it yet. In general, I've been looking at printers around $200, $180 to about $250. I have a couple printers that are close, but they either require somewhat complex assembly or they're relatively small and have limitations. So I decided to raise the bar. I'm going to look at a printer that lists for $400 that you can get a bit less expensively on Amazon and that's the QIDI Tech X-Smart printer. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Let's begin by looking at the basic characteristics for this printer. And no, you're not imagining things. I am wearing a different shirt. It's a couple days later. I waited until I had completed a couple prints to talk about the configuration of the printer. I thought I'd be able to highlight those features that are most important best. Overall, this is a relatively small printer in terms of print volume. It creates a print that's 150 by 150 by 150 um, millimeters. And to put that in perspective, the Creality Ender line is, I believe, 220 by 220 by somewhere around 220 to 250. So this is on the low print volume side. That said, it is fully enclosed. It is built like a tank. It feels more like an appliance than it does like a hobbyist 3D printer. When you take it out of the box, you remove the foam, you plug it in, and you are ready to go. You install some software on your laptop, software from Quiddy, Q-I-D-I, that is tightly connected with this printer. You load up your 3D models and you print them over Wi-Fi. So very interesting configuration. This printer lists for about $400. I purchased it for a bit less on Amazon. You have the ability to open the front cover, it stays up. It has a removable print surface that connects with magnets. It has a color LED on the front, and we'll cover that in more detail shortly. Your print spool of filament connects to the back, and I'll show you a picture of that here. And the top cover, and in fact the side covers, all come off. Now, while there's a tube here that looks like a Bowden tube, it is not. That is just a filament guide because this is a direct extruder printer. That means the, ex the extruder, the component that pulls the filament and pushes it through the nozzle is sitting right on top of the hot end, the component of the printer that melts the filament before it goes to the nozzle. There are advantages and disadvantages to that approach. It does allow you to print with more exotic filaments more easily, um, and that is a significant advantage. On the other hand, this print head mechanism is heavier, and that can cause uh, problems of quality if the rest of the components are not of higher, high enough specifications. Um, another additional interesting features is this is a Wi-Fi ready printer. You connect to it either over Wi-Fi or over an Ethernet cable. You do have the ability to use a traditional USB key. There are no SD cards, mini SD cards. This is much, much more user friendly. Overall, very, very interesting printer. One additional feature is it does have power fail resume. So if you lose power, your print will start where it stopped. Now, let's take a look at the front panel. Then we'll take a look at the software that comes with it. Then I'll review some prints and wrap up my impressions of this printer. The front panel display has four sections, print, system, tools, and after-sales service. After-sales service just lists the email addresses of the support organization. You can use either of these two. They appear to go to a group of people. 
The first thing you'll want to do is Tools. And under Tools, you'll click on Leveling. Now, the leveling software does not auto-level the bed. Instead, it moves it to the three locations where underneath you'll find turn screws that you can use to level your bed. In addition, the Quiddy printer ships with a special piece of vinyl that you use between the print head and the print bed to do the leveling. On the USB key that comes with the printer is a video about how to level the bed. So we're going to skip back to the main menu. The manual option is not the user's guide. It is a way to move the print head, the various components, up or down. You would use that to move the print head out of the way if you were moving a print. Preheating is to preheat either the bed or the hot end. The filament option is used to load filament. You first press on the button in the middle, you wait till it comes up to temperature, then you unload or load your filament. Internet is where you put in your internet credentials. If you click on the first line and there's nothing set up already, it will list the system IDs that it finds in the area. Stop is emergency stop. Fan turns the fan on or off. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that manually. System gives you various information about the setup, lets you change the language, lets you turn the LED lights on or off and allows you to reset the printer to factory settings. Print is very, very simple. You navigate to a particular print. It will show you that print on the screen. Then you press the print button and the print will begin. Now the images for a print are only available with the XSmart slicer. And let's talk about that next. One of the strengths of the Quiddy environment is that it is a fully integrated environment. In some ways, that's sort of like the Apple iPhone environment, where you obtain everything from one manufacturer. Your hardware, you can buy filament from them, and the slicer. To refresh your memory, a slicer is the program that takes a 3D model and converts it into a format where it can be printed layer by layer specifically for your printer. The Quiddy Slicer is a derivative of Cura with a custom user interface. You begin by clicking on the file folder in the upper left hand corner to open up a model that you want to convert into a format into G code ready to be printed. Once you do that, it's available on the screen. One of the things that's unique about the Quiddy environment and its slicer is that it is fully integrated with Wi-Fi. You'll see in this picture that above the prepare button is the address of our printer. So once we click prepare to slice, we'll be able to send it to the printer. This slicer, because it is based on a version three variant of Cura, has all of the standard Cura capabilities. And in addition, if you click on the button that says expert mode, you can add any of the standard Cura parameters to your dialogs. This is a relatively fast printer for a printer of this size. Um, I found that it is quite a bit faster than the Monoprice Select Mini, at least as fast as the Ender 3 family of printers. I have not tried pushing these speeds up yet, but I believe this printer will be able to sustain even higher speeds, up to perhaps 100 millimeters per second, because the print bed only moves up and down and not back and forth. This is a architecture that's similar to the Ender 5 architecture. Finally, you load a print with the file folder. You set your basic settings. If this is your first time, all you need to do is select your material, the configuration, quality that you're looking for, perhaps your layer height and your infill, and click prepare. Then you have the option, if you click on the layer icon, to see the individual layers and how this print will proceed. Okay, I'm back after spending a couple days working with this printer, and I'll tell you my first impression, I really like this printer. It is by far the easiest 3D printer I've ever used. 
The software that comes with it is tightly integrated. You connect the software on your laptop, a PC or a Mac, to the printer over Wi-Fi. There are no cables to connect. You can optionally connect it with an Ethernet cable. The Wi-Fi, while a little finicky to first get connected, works very, very well. The next thing I really like about this printer is this print bed. It is exceptionally good. Um, I never had a print fail to stick. The prints all released when it cooled. It's a spring steel style print bed, similar to the Prusa i3 MK3, but it has a very different coating on it. Um, I don't know what this coating is exactly, but it works. So I really like this print bed. The only problem I ever had with it is if I set the print bed temperature a little too high, things actually stuck a little too well and were a little hard to get off. So this is a big plus for this printer. In addition, unlike the Creality Ender printers, where magnets have to be aligned between the top and the bottom when you put on the print bed, this you stick anywhere on there since the whole print bed is spring steel. The next thing I really like is that you can configure this printer in two configurations. One for printing materials that need a heated print envelope, such as ABS, or for most hobbyists and new people to 3D printing, you're just gonna be printing in PLA. And in that case, you want better airflow. So this just comes off, it's connected with magnets. Let me set this aside. And both sides come off, I'll take off this side, connected with magnets, let me set that down. Now I do wish you could leave it fully enclosed and they had an extra fan you could turn on, but that's probably a higher end printer requirement. The next thing I've already mentioned is it is a direct extruder. This is not a Bowden tube, it's just a filament guide. Um, and the print head works very, very well. It is a bit big, this enclosure. So when you're first printing your first layer and you're looking to see if it's sticking, it's a little hard to see because this covers a lot of the area. Um, but as I said, I had no trouble with any prints sticking. Another thing you notice is anytime you go to stop a print, it asks if you wanna save a file so you can resume from where you stopped. That's a, just a nice feature. Um, and that same feature is used for if you lose power on this printer. It will automatically start from when you restart it from where it lost power. So overall, this is a great printer. Now let's look at print quality. This is the model that came on the USB key on, with the printer, and it printed perfectly. It's absolutely beautiful. So then I went right ahead to print a really hard print, and this is this calibration model that is from the Autodesk Kickstart collaboration, and it printed okay. I'd say it's a B-grade print. The dimensional accuracy of the various parts is very, very good, but it clearly had a little bit of trouble with temperature and cooling. Uh, these towers have a lot of stringing, and there's a little bit of droop, both in these features, in these bridges, and under this overhang. So I'd rate this a B-grade print. So then, I printed a classic 3D Benji, and it's a really good Benji, um, but it still had a bit of extra stringing inside, and so the temperature issues were something to look at. So I did some really complicated hard tests. I printed first both of these types of models. These are two different models that are used for testing stringing, and they came out terrible, really terrible. Um, they are difficult to print, Many printers can't print them successfully, but they should be better than this. So I did a lot of experiments. Uh, as you can see here, I did quite a few experiments, and I wasn't able to get the quality I expected. So I remembered that the other reviews I've seen of this printer said that the support is very good. And in fact, in the user's guide, it says that you get six months of unlimited support. So I emailed the support address that was in the user guide, the address is a address at the manufacturer in China. I'm in the United States right now, so I knew the time zones were different. Well within 24 hours, I didn't check the exact timestamp. I got a very nice detailed reply. They recommended I significantly lower the temperature I print at. Now, this was interesting 
because I was using Hatchbox PLA for these blue prints. And that's a material I use to calibrate all of my printers, so I have a consistent material across printers. I normally print that at 206 degrees, which is a little bit hot, but I find it prints very, very well. I dropped it all the way down to 180 degrees, I increased the retraction, and it produced a perfect print of this tower. So then I printed a calibration cat, a print I like a lot. Uh, it came out very, very good, um, very, very smooth, with the exception of this one overhang. So there's still a little bit of tuning. Maybe I have to think about changing the orientation. I have to think about where the fans are. Uh, but overall, a good print. So what is my conclusion about print quality? I'd say this is B plus A minus. You can get better print quality off a Creality Ender printer, even the Ender 3, which is a much less expensive printer. But it is significantly harder to use. I took this out of the box, I loaded the software on my machine, I connected it to Wi-Fi, I loaded up a model, and I said print. This is a wonderful, wonderful machine for someone who wants to think about 3D printing and not think about the mechanics of the machine itself. What is my conclusion? Well, my conclusion is that with a bit of tuning of temperature and retraction, and specifically I turned combing off with a, with a bit, bit of tuning, this is worth $500 for the right person. If you're really handy, if IKEA furniture is fun for you to assemble, and you like playing around with electronics, you get that new stereo system, plugging in all the cables to your TV and everything else is a joy, you probably should purchase a Creality Ender 3 Pro. If you hate doing that stuff, but you want to start printing 3D prints, you want to use it for practical purposes, uh, maybe you have a project at home, you need some hinges, some uh, brackets, uh, maybe you're into, I don't know, railroad models and you want to print various models. Uh, perhaps you want to use it to build memories with your children by printing wonderfully fun things. Great printer. This is a great printer. If you can't afford $500 or $450, $460, $470, whatever it's selling for at the time, then the Monoprice Select Mini Pro for about $230 is perhaps the printer for you, because there's no assembly. Uh, print quality is very good, as good as this printer. Not as good as the Creality, but as good as this printer. But it's a little harder to use. The software is not integrated as well. It's not as robust and solid. This thing is built like a rock. It's all metal here with nice plastic covers. So those are three printers I would consider. The Monoprice Select Mini at about $230, the Pro version, the Creality Ender 3 Pro, which is a larger print area. It's about 220 or 230 millimeters square versus 150 square on the mono price in this printer. Or if you can afford this printer, this is a wonderful place to start and you won't be disappointed. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I'm gonna to continue working with this printer. Uh, I'm actually going to leave it at my son's house uh, uh, they live in another state from us, and I'm going to go, when I'm there visiting, I'm going to do some more prints with this printer. And uh, please, if you enjoyed this material, give me a thumbs up, like the channel, subscribe. Have a great day, and let's continue learning together.